deal with it. The first scripture is in Romans chapter 3, verse 24. Right now I have to read from the board behind me, but Rick is in the process of getting another screen put back there that we can read it and don't have to look back. All are justified at all. All of us that have put our faith in Christ is fully justified. You've got to remember there's a legal as aspect to our salvation. We are justified. All of us. And made upright and in right standing with God freely and graciously by His grace, by God's grace, unmerited favor. Not that we deserved it, because we didn't. But he did it because of his loving kindness and his mercy. He forgave us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, justified us in the sight of God. Remember, we were separated from God because of, of Adam's sin. His unmerited favor and mercy through the redemption which is provided in Christ Jesus. There is salvation in one person and that is Jesus Christ. Now when Adam sinned in the garden, you remember that? You've read your Bible. I hope you read your Bible. It's important because you'll understand more about my preaching when you read the Bible. But Adam and Eve sin, and I won't go into all that because I could park right there. And the ripple effect, everybody say ripple, ripple. Effect. effect. How many has ever thrown a rock out in the water, a nice lake, just, as, just like a mirror, and it makes a ripple effect all the way across? Well, that's what happened. When Adam sinned, the ripple effect all the way across humanity, all the way down to every human being, and it hit us. So when we were born into this world, we were born sinners. Now listen, we were born sinners because of Adam. We had done no sin ourselves. We became sinners by the sin of Adam and Eve. And we inherit that by nature. Okay? And so God made a plan. And that plan was that he was going to redeem us back to himself. Now, when Adam and Eve fell, what happened was they were separated. They were separated from God. And because of Adam and Eve's sin, we were all separated from God. And one of the reasons, or one of the reasons, and there's many reasons why Christ died, one was to get all of our sins forgiven and to make us righteous, which he could bring us to a holy God. I want you to get that picture. Get that picture. Very important that you get that picture. We were separated from God. We could not approach God. He's a holy God. So God sent his son to die on the cross to redeem you and me where Christ could bring us back to the Father. Okay? Now that's important to understand. So, not only has your sins been forgiven, but you've been fully justified. That means just as if you have never sinned. Well, that's powerful. He paid a debt that he did not owe. We owed a debt that we could not pay. So we come to Christ who is our Savior, and we accept the work that he did on the cross. By redeeming us, and the Bible says redemption means bought us back. Bought us back. Back to God. He bought us with his own blood that was shed at Calvary. And now we have become children of God. So here's the scene. The cross is here. And we're, we're born on this side of the cross. Our fathers and mothers inherit the sin it was passed on to us and we pass it on to our children but when you accept Christ then that is dealt with 
You've been redeemed. Debt has been paid. You are now free, fully justified in the eyes of God, made holy by the one sacrifice once and for all, past, present, and future, by that one sacrifice. That's in Hebrews 10. Now, what happens is God put us in Christ, and this is what water baptism really is all about. You'll see that God put us in Christ, and you read the Bible. How many have noticed the scriptures in Christ? In Christ. If you haven't noticed that, I, I challenge you to, to uh, get a uh, yellow pencil or something and mark, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. God put us all in Christ, and when Christ died, we all died. The Adam sin died in Christ. We all died in Christ. And when Christ was buried, we were buried with him. And when he was resurrected, we were resurrected with him to walk in the newness of life. Now we're on this side of the cross. We're not called sinners no more. We're called what? Saints. We are saints of God. Made holy, fully justified, consecrated by Jesus' precious blood. Now let me tell you something. We've, we've heard that the blood has not lost its power. You sing it. But let me tell you something. The blood has not lost its voice. The Lord showed me that the other day. I said, what do you mean? How many of you know that Abel's blood calls out for vengeance. <clears throat> but Christ's blood calls out. He has a voice. The Bible says that. It calls out for mercy. How many wants justice? Don't raise your hand. You don't want it. <laughs> you want mercy. And mercy is available. Now, when you become a saint, your spirit man is born again. The Bible says we're born again by the incorruptible seed of the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. Our new man, which was dead towards God because of Adam's sin, has become alive now unto God. And your spirit man has been fully justified. How many of you know you still have the same body? Now that's future tense. One day we'll have a glorified body. When Christ comes back, we will have a glorified body. How many is cold? I mean, it's just right. Okay. If you see any ice cubes on anybody, just cut the air condition down. I mean, I'm comfortable myself. Now, you've got to see yourself now, not, not an old sinner anymore. If you were an alcoholic, you aren't an alcoholic. If you were this or you were that, that's finished. That's buried with Christ. When Christ died, you, we died with Christ. And the good news is when he was buried... Our old man was buried with him, and now we have been risen to walk in the newness of life. And that's all water baptism does. It shows all of us we died with Christ, we were buried with Christ when we go down into water, and we come out of the water, it shows that we've been resurrected with Christ Jesus. Now to walk in the newness of life. And that's what water baptism, it has no power to save. And I know some denomination Christian their children, and I might get into all of that. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. You can read that in Romans 6, 6, 6, 11, 6, 13, all through Romans there. He did it for us. Now, I want you to hear something. God did it for us. You didn't get it, did you? God did it for us. You have been saved by the grace of God. You've been saved by His working, by His Spirit working. Adam brought you into a sin nature. And when we receive Christ as our Savior, we get a God nature. Are you listening? You now have a God nature in you. Now that old Adam nature, have you noticed every once in a while it will rise up? How many has ever noticed that? Okay. You, now you've got to get your mind renewed. Now you're over on this side of the cross. <coughs> and here's where people's problem. I, I said you were holy, 
but we're not holy in our conduct all the time, are we? You see, there's a difference. Our conduct is one thing, but our position in Christ, we are justified, sanctified, made holy once and for all. Put Hebrews 10.10 up there. This will shock some folk. But I want to shock you to shock you into what God has done. Hebrews 10.10. 10. Good. In, in accordance with this will, this will. How many know the New Testament is a new will? It's a new testament. It's a new will. God's made a whole new will out for us. Will of God. We have been what? Made holy. See, I've been made holy. Very good. Consecrated. I'm consecrated. I need to say it. Yeah. And sanctified. Yes. Through the offering. And who was the offering? Jesus was the offering. He was the sacrifice made once for all. That one sacrifice was given once and for all time. Now, in the Old Testament, they had to continue to kill these animals by the thousands over the years, all the time. And the high priest carried the blood into the Holy of Holies once a year for the, his sins and the sins of the na uh, nation. But when Christ died and we accepted Christ, once and for all, all of our sins have been forgiven. As far as the east is from the west, God don't remember them anymore. But who does? We do. <laughs> the devil does. And that's your fight. That's your fight. Now, offering made once for all of the body, of his body, on that cross, Jesus Christ is the only one. So it's done. It's finished. It's complete. It doesn't move. The line is there. We have been justified once and for all, and if you have received Christ, and the Bible says, if I will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thy shall be saved. Amen. Now, that's a work of the Holy Spirit. When we believe in our heart, when we believe that Christ died for us, when we believe that we can become a child of God when we accept him as our Lord and Savior, we believe that God sees our heart. He reads our heart. He doesn't look at the outward appearance. Now, we do. We judge by the outward appearance. <laughs> and there's good, how many of you know it's good judgments? And then there's bad judgments, okay? I'll guarantee you why some of you have been in here this morning, you've done some judgments. That's not all bad. Good judgments. But we're not supposed to criticize and judge and condemn people. But as a Christian, God holds nothing against you. Nothing. We have been reconciled back to God. The word reconciled means made friendly again. God ain't mad at nobody in this place today. Now, I know you look at some of the bad characteristics and situations of your life, and <laughs> you say, you know, um, I got... Everybody's aware of your weaknesses, aren't you? Anybody got any weaknesses in here besides me? Now, that has nothing to do with your sanctification or your justification. God did that for us. But some of us might have a few bad habits, like burping at the table. Anybody does that? I love kids. They're honest. Another honor for back there. The rest of you. <coughs> you look at your husband or your wife. All right. I want you to turn, if you will, to Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15 on the board, verse 1. <coughs> Excuse me. I like to unfold messages where we can understand. Now, when you read, I encourage you to read Romans 13, 14, and 15 when you get a chance. Now, this is, Paul is talking to the Christian people. Most of the scriptures is written to God's people. Understand that. 
And a lot of things that Paul writes about in the Bible, he's correcting. Are you listening? He has to correct because of the deception and the error of, of God's people. Oh, they're justified. He didn't say they were lost. He said they're carnal. They're worldly. How many of you know we have worldly Christians? Oh, we don't have any in here. We have carnal Christians. Any car- don't raise your hand. But he didn't say they were lost. They just carnal. Uh, more more uh, of the conduct of the world than Christ-like. You understand what I'm talking about? Now, we won't go into that, but you, you, you've been around a long time. Okay, look at this now. We who are strong. Well, let's see if we have any strong Christians in here. Uh, if we do, he's talking to us. You got that? in our conviction and of robust faith, are to bear with the failings and the frailties and the tender scruples of the weak. How many knows what scruple means? <laughs> Boy, I'm educated. <laughs> different opinions. Everybody over here has got different opinions. Over here, a lot of people have different opinions. What am I to do? With all your opinions and all your opinions, bear. Four, bear. Oh, that's a new word for some folks. Say bear. bear. Forbear. Bear. That's the forbearance that the church runs on. Listen, he's talking to Christians. You mean Christian people have failures? Now think about it. Read that. Huh? Frailties, scruples, all kind of different uh, opinions. We are to help carry the doubts and the squirms. How many knows what a worm, I mean a squirm is? Have you ever tried to put a, a worm on a hook? Huh? You ever tried to put a worm on a hook? You tried that? A, a squirm. You ever seen people squirm? I've seen them so convicted in their seat, they just squirm. I think they're going to do the jitterbug. All right, listen. Help carry the doubts and squirms of others and not to please ourselves. Camp out there, Bob. I believe I will. I get weak in the knees when I read that. Please others and not to please ourselves? Oh, my goodness, Lord. Bear? I told my husband if he didn't straighten up, I'm going to bear him. No, he ain't talking about that now. But look at that. Let that just get in your heart and your mind. We are to bear with one another. Do you know how much bearing I have to do with you guys? How much I have to forbear with some of you folks? Well, Bob, do you realize how much we have to forbear with you? That's true. That's true. And I thank you for forbearing. Because I need a whole lot of forbearing. And so do you. But that's God's grace and mercy in action. Now I want you to get that in there. He didn't say you were lost because you had all these squirms. <laughs> squirms. Some of you are still looking at it. That's good. Let it burn. That's why we put that up there. Mm-mm. Well, let's go to the next one. All right, next verse. Here we go. Oh, Father. There we go. <coughs> Thank you, Willie. Right on the ball. Let each one of us put your name in there. Go ahead. Put your name in there. Bob, Willie, Floyd. Make it a practice to please and make happy his wife. Come on, let's put it down where we live. Our neighbor, who's your who's your closest neighbor? Who's your closest neighbor? Bob, why are you teaching this? Because did you know this is what's happening to our nation? People don't know how to forbear. They don't know how to treat one another. You know what they're doing today? Somebody tell me what they're doing. Killing each other. 
bang, 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 shooting one another. Because the church has quit preaching this. Listen, there's no condemnation. Say there's no condemnation. Some folks, they don't, know how, they don't know how to live. They, they, they've come up in dysfunction families where the husband and wife throw, throw uh, frying pans at one another. Do you understand? I've been around a long time. Somebody say, Pastor Bob, I've been around a long time. I, I, have been, I have been in the midst of husbands and wives. And I, I say, oh God, if they just knew how to love one another. Listen, happy his, make, make happy his uh, neighbor for his good for his good lock the doors don't let nobody out and for his true welfare <clears throat> to edify him to strengthen him and build him up spiritually Woo, glory Powerful. Thank you. Gosh, I'm just getting started. I've got to quit. <laughs> How many is enjoying the message so far? All right, all right, all right, all right. <clears throat> Verse 3, we'll probably quit there because we've got to water baptized. All right, you reckon? We may go to 4. Okay. Thank you. For whatever was thus... No, back up one. I had one click, not two. <laughs> for, Christ, for Christ did not please. For Christ did not please. For Christ did not please. Oh, Lord, keep me out of trouble. I want everybody to love me. Think about the times when you want it your way. <laughs> I'm count listen, I'm human, I'm right in the pot with you. <laughs> well, we're going to do it my way. If you don't, I'm going to sing you to the moon, honey. So put your riding boots on, I'll, you on your way, honey. If I don't get my way, but my wife says, whatever. <laughs> How can you argue with whatever? You can't, whatever. And God deals with my heart. Listen, I'm serious about this. Listen, women, I'm telling you a little secret here. God will deal, if he's a Christian man, if he knows God, God will deal with his heart, and he'll be like a little puppy. He will. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. There's a way in which God will honor. You don't have to fuss and, and throw bricks at you, each other and... Uh, I like the sound of the frying pan when it hits my head. It go, it's got a good ding to it. it is, how does it sound when it hits your head? It's deep. It, it, it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Look, for Christ did not please himself, gave no thought to his own interests. Oh, let that burn into our... See, oh, in other words, I'm just to be an old... Listen to this. Oh, I'm just to be an old... Um, Rubber mat for him to walk on me? Oh, no. You don't understand. God will come to your rescue. Are you listening? When you do it God's way, God is obligated to come to you and you and you and you and you and me and defend you. Are you hearing me? Now, I know some people are very hurt and they're wounded. And we, we've been preaching on inner healing on Wednesday night. And if you need inner healing, come and we'll pray. We've seen people delivered, set free. But listen to what, Christ, I don't, I don't know if you can understand this. What you try to hold on to 
is what the devil will shake your cage. Right. How many of you got your little thing with the buttons? Mm -hmm. You got your little thing with the buttons. Pick it up. Look at it. No. You got one. Did everybody get one with the little buttons? Everybody got it? Look at it now. Who didn't get one? Let's look at one of those buttons. Everybody pay attention. If you have that button to hold on and control and manipulate, listen to me, control and manipulate, the devil's going to shake your cage and shake your marriage. But when you turn it loose and trust God, God has the responsibility to make it right. To, to, listen, I've lived long enough. Look at me. You're not talking about somebody just graduated from Sunday school. I've been to the school of the Spirit. Now, listen to me. You know yourself. If you turn it loose, you set your own self free. Come up here real quick. We're going to get you water baptized quick, right? You know? If, if, he, if, if he has something against me and he doesn't forgive me, maybe something I did, and I didn't even know I did it, but he maybe imagined it, and he's got that re resentfulness in him, it's not for my sake, listen to this, it's not for my sake that he forgive me. Whose sake is it? For his sake. His sake. He's got to release that hurt. He's got to release that resentment. And I'm fine. I didn't even know I hurt him. When he releases that, what happened? He, he sets himself free. Everybody understand that? Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Listen, all of us are human beings. How many in here has ever resented somebody besides me? Man, I guarantee you, if you went up there and, and landed on the moon, you'd see a lot of people up there. <laughs> that, that's just, you know, but you forgive, and when you do, you release your own self. You see the little thing with all the buttons? How many buttons do you still have in your life? Did you read that little article I gave everybody? Some of you are looking at me like you don't know what I'm doing. Or talking or something. How many's got the little thing? How many buttons do you have? A lot. <laughs> you got a lot of the buttons. How many in here know what I'm talking about? Buttons. Let's see your hands. How many don't know? All right. So what I'm saying is get rid of the buttons and nobody can push them anymore. Hey, you're free at last because you don't have no buttons for me to push or you to push or I to push or anybody to push. You're free. Get rid of those buttons. That resentment. I, I don't like the color of your, your blah, 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 blah. Keep yourself free. Maintain your freedom. All right. Let's look at that again. I'm going to close. For Christ did not please himself, gave no thought to his own interest. But as it is written, the reproaches and abuse of those who reproached and abused you, you, you're the you there, fell on me. Who's the me? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, when somebody comes at you, points their finger, does this, does that, that has already fallen on Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago. He took it upon his own self, and he did it, and it fell on him, and you're free. And you've got to receive it and claim it and thank God for it. Wow, what a Savior we have. Well, I've got much to say, but we've got to close. Uh, who's going to sing? Charles, you go sing. Would you conduct this, sir? Uh, you're going to come up and sing then. Uh, yeah, she's going to sing. And you can be the man in charge here. And uh, Rick, up here. Anybody wants to come up, receive Christ? We have our leaders here. Yolanda's going to sing. And come on back here. I want to drown you.
think everybody should know this song. This song has been in my spirit for some weeks now. So it's I Must Tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, he kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. I must tell Jesus all of my troubles. He is a kind, compassionate friend. If I but ask him, he will deliver. Make of my trials quickly and end. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me. Jesus alone. It says, um, I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free, no longer bound, no more chains holding me, my soul is resting, it's such a blessing. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free. Are you free? Yes. Say it again. I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's such a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, I'm free. Just it. Tell everybody goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Love ya. <laughs> oh, a little bit. All right. You can just sort of squat down back like that, you know. Mm -hmm. Ron, do you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? I do. Have you accepted him as your Lord and Savior? I do. Do you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead? I do. Then the Bible says you're saved. 
Oh, your nose, and you go down. You're not going to hold it? Okay. My brother, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. children of God. God is for you. He is not against you. He'll walk with you wherever you go. And remember, he's with, he loves you. How much? Somebody tell me. He loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, somebody on this side, get up and go over there and hug your brothers and sisters' neck. Go ahead. I dare you. Do it right now. Just go over there.